I'm Major General Munir Zaman, retired. I'm President of Bangladesh Institute of Peace and Security Studies, an independent think tank based in Dhaka, Bangladesh. I'm also the current chair of the Global Military Advisory Council on Climate Change, an international body of experts touching on all continents, and we work extensively on the security implications of climate change. In my capacity as the chair of GMAC, or the Global Military Advisory Council on Climate Change, I attended the COP15 in Paris last year. The COP15, I have to take it back. Sure, sure, sure. Mm. Yeah, you can just go ahead and we'll, we'll I see. That. In my capacity as the chair of, in my capacity as the chair of GMAC, I also attended the COP21 in Paris last year. The COP21 in Paris last year was a significant milestone in the history of the journey of climate negotiations. Because this was the negotiations that was so important for the international community and global humanity that if we had failed there, it would have taken us years backward and perhaps the international changes that are coming in the climate change would have suffered a great loss. One significant aspect of the negotiations this year from my side was that GMAC issued a call for action on understanding of climate implications for security globally and internationally. It was very well received in the sense that we alerted the international community that the urgency of the implications of climate change on security has become rather crucial and if we do not attend to these issues now then we will be absolutely meeting disastrous consequences down the road. I'm happy to report that it was received very well by leaders and the international community and they have taken a note of many of the aspects that we highlighted. A big success of the negotiations this year that is for the first time that 196 countries participating in the global negotiations agreed on principle to some of the issues that was put on the table. So therefore, in nutshell, we came out of Paris with an agreement. This was especially significant after the frustrations of the negotiations that were taking place in Copenhagen in COP15, for example. So in that score, COP21 in Paris was a great success that it, we came out with the success of an agreed negotiations in principle. But there are various challenges that lie ahead for the reason that it is an agreement in principle and many of the implementation details have been left out. For example, the INDCs on which the whole negotiations are based are extremely voluntary by nations. And even if all countries implement their INDCs 100%, there are critics who are saying that the global temperature will rise above 3% by end of the century. And that is something that we cannot afford. We have to cap the global temperature rise at preferably 1.5 degrees and nothing above 2 degrees because the consequences of a global temperature rise above 2 degrees can be disastrous for not only for the nature but for the stability of the world and for the grave security consequences in the security implications that we face. Therefore, although we agreed in principle, there is much work that needs to be done ahead so that countries implement whatever they have pledged and improve on those. The second weakness that we found that it will be after three to five years when we will take a stock of how we are achieving the intended cuts and emission. And if we are not achieving well, then it may be rather late to go back and correct them after three to five years. Therefore, a lot of intentions are left to member states and individual states, and they have to take the responsibility in implementing whatever they have pledged. The third issue that also came to my mind is that the whole agreement has been based on the general principles that have to be implemented in the coming years. But there are areas of the world which has grave consequences and the timescales are different. For example, the small and island states are extremely vulnerable and they are in the front line states in the face of climate change changes. No special provisions have been made for them. There are groups of vulnerable states or the frontline states, including my own state, Bangladesh, 
which have more urgent consequences that need to be addressed, but no special provisions have been made for those states. So these are the issues that need to be addressed separately after the agreement has been penned in New York sometime this year. The fund that has been agreed, $100 billion that is to be created by member states for adaptation purposes of the vulnerable and small states needs to be created immediately. We had seen such promise before, particularly in Copenhagen, but not in materialized. So we only hope that the promises of funds that has been made in Paris are implemented so that the urgent needs of adaptation of member states, particularly vulnerable states, are met urgently. So on the whole, I would like to say that great achievement has been achieved in Paris by agreeing on principle to solve the basic principles for climate change negotiations, but much needs to be done so that the grave consequences that we foresee from the climate implications, particularly the security implications of climate change, do not come and challenge the stability and the security of our regions and of the international community and the world. Thank you all very much. Thank you.